guys, good morning and welcome back to NCLEX session. We're now in part 11. I am Professor Diane Anderson. I am an advanced practice nurse. I have a master's in education and I've been an RN for over 20 years. So let's get started. I have just a mixture of questions, mostly I would say medium level in terms of difficulty. They're not too hard, they're not really, really easy, but you should still be able to get these and knock them out. If you do have questions at the end of our session, I do have my email address there. So you can ask any questions you may have, including if you need help with tutoring to prepare for your NCLEX exam. And if you are a med student or already a nurse, and these are questions that help you to brush up on what you're already doing. If you still have questions, please reach out. I love helping everyone. Okay guys, let's get started. Question one, a patient with a history of asthma is prescribed a long acting beta agonist, an LABA inhaler. Which medication should the nurse expect to be prescribed alongside the LABA for optimal asthma management? A, oral corticosteroid, B, a short-acting beta antagonist or SABA inhaler. C, an anticholinergic inhaler. Or D, a leukotriene modifier. If you chose B, a short-acting beta agnostic inhaler, you are correct. Examples of that medication would be albuterol, also known as Pro-Air or Provental. An example of one of the long-acting beta agnostic inhalers that doctors usually prescribe would include Cerevent, Provana, Performist, Floridil. Any of those names that you've heard of, those are long-acting brands. The reason why it's prescribed is because you need quick relief of your asthma symptoms, and that's where the short-acting um, beta agnostic comes in and um, when you have a long acting that's for long-term asthma control more like a cortical steroid which takes a little while to um, work it's question two a nurse is caring for a patient with a central venous catheter the patient develops signs of central line associated bloodstream infection or CLAPSI what is the most appropriate nursing intervention? Is it A, remove the catheter immediately? B, administer prophylactic antibiotics? C, change the dressing around the catheter? D, obtain a blood culture and notify the healthcare provider? If you chose D, you are correct. You wanna obtain a blood culture and notify the healthcare provider. And as you know, the blood culture will confirm or deny if there really is an actual infection. Question three. A patient with end-stage renal disease is on hemodialysis. Which laboratory value should the nurse closely monitor in this patient? Is it A, serum sodium? B, hemoglobin level? C, serum calcium? D, the BUN or blood urea nitrogen levels. If you chose D, BUN or blood urea nitrogen levels, you are correct. In patients with end-stage renal disease and on hemodialysis, the BUN should always be closely monitored because it reflects the removal of waste products during dialysis. Question number four. A pregnant woman is receiving prenatal care. Which prenatal vitamin should the nurse recommend to prevent neural tube defects? And that one's a pretty easy one, guys. I threw a little easy one in there to see if you could get that one. Is it vitamin C, vitamin D, folic acid, or iron? And of course, you guys got it. The answer is C, folic acid. Last question, guys. Question five. A patient with heart disease is prescribed the Johnson. Now, which assessment, in addition to heart rate, should the nurse prioritize when administering the Johnson? Is it A, blood pressure? B, respiratory rate? 
C, serum potassium levels. D, pain level. If you chose C, serum potassium levels, you are correct. Now, a low potassium level, like hypokalemia, can increase the risk of digoxin toxicity. Okay, guys, this was just a quick lesson today. Just want to sharpen you up and see what you know and see what you might want to work on. But like I said, if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to um, reach out on my email. I am here for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.